Hi, Steve. Hello, Bonnie. Where are we today? We're just, oh my goodness, what's in front of us? Yes, well, this is something that's very familiar to me, but I haven't seen for 11 years now. And it's the mural sculpture that stood in front of the reception at Hatfield, the old offices of the Lee Valley Water Company. And just to explain to our listeners, this is the second in our series looking at the history of Affinity Water in 12 objects. Today, we're looking at, surprisingly, sculpture, at pumping stations and reservoirs, which are all nearby. Let's start with this sculpture. It's magnificent. Just describe to our listeners the size of it, Steve. This is the largest of William Mitchell's sculptures, which he made in 1964. It's the largest of its type in the world, which is why it was listed in 2012. It's supposed to depict the cycle of water, how it comes to us literally from the sky to when we actually drink it. There's all sorts of things you can imagine. There's even something that looks like a telephone. And um, perhaps if our listeners have good ears, they can hear the pigeons cooing at the top. Yes, I don't think anybody envisaged that pigeons would actually use it, but they look really at home and they don't seem to be staining it in any way. So in terms of location, where are we? We're in Bishop's Rise, Hatfield in Hertfordshire, so it's slap bang in the middle of the central region. And you've been with Affinity Water, man and boy, for over 40 years? Yep, that's right, and I came to this site in 1982. Where we're standing now would have been roughly the reception area, so I came here when I was 18 or so. Now this magnificent sculpture, it is large, I mean I can't see, but it, it goes way up into the sky, very wide too. But this was actually situated inside the office then? Yes, it was inside the office and to the right of it was actually a stream that came out underneath it. It didn't particularly ripple much, in fact it's been reported that somebody actually waded through it because they didn't even notice the marble had changed into water. Now it's made out of concrete? Yeah, it's poured concrete. It took 16 hours to pour the concrete between the shuttering and the, I do believe it was a polystyrene actually. It was actually carved from polystyrene. So between that and the concrete shuttering, 16 hours worth of concrete was poured at two foot intervals. So it was left to dry because and then another two foot and so on so it, it took 16 hours I believe. Well let me just step through the bushes green bushes in front of me and just, just read what the plaque says it begins this mural was originally commissioned to stand in the offices of the Lee Valley Water Company which stood on the site the sculptor William Mitchell a born 1925 described his purpose in creating the work and then there's a quote from him and it says at the bottom the mural is grade two listed in acknowledgement of its innovative design and artistic importance you said steve you could see a telephone can you see anything else definitely pipe work things that look like wheels or sort of cogs or something other further little what looks like droplets of water it's one of these pieces of artwork you can see what you like in it you can make yourself see what you like in it and I think that was probably the idea and that you form your own opinion what it's all about well it's not quite Anthony <clears throat> Gormley's Angel of the North or Michelangelo's David but but it's listed and also importantly, it's made of a hard material because then the sculpture lasts. It's not like a sculpture that's made out of wood or carved out of something fragile. It's going to stand the test of time. Yep, it's very rough cast, I would say. I, I think it's very much of its time. It certainly suited the 1960s building. It, it looked perfectly suited to the lobby, which was incidentally, this, this lobby, this, this reception area was huge. It was almost regarded as a waste of space because it wasn't used for anything most of the time. It, it had fake marble floor and a massive grand staircase. It, it, this perfectly suited the space. And do you know anything more about the sculpture? We can hear more pigeons, by the way. They seem to really love perching in it. Tweet of the day, perhaps. Yes, I do know a bit about the sculpture, and hopefully on this site somewhere we can find its baby sister, which was a test piece that William Mitchell did to show the client just what he could do. There is a smaller version of this on this site. Gosh, well, it's quite difficult for people to come and see it, but we are uploading a photograph of it onto the Affinity Water Twitter stream and your 
podcast. So let's walk and see what else we can find because we've got to seek out a pumping station and a reservoir. Yep, I'm sure we can find those. Although the site is very different to when I last came here. It seems like a perfectly sort of taken over site by other people that was ours for years and years and years. It's a residential housing road we're walking up. I can't believe that there's a reservoir here and a pumping station and so near. Oh, look, you're right. The baby sculpture is here. Well, well spotted because actually I didn't know it was just here. But yes, here's the baby test piece. I wonder Um, what the residents feel looking out onto it. But it is wonderful again. And it, it has all the same squirrels and squiggles and depicts, as you say, water and mechanics. Yes, I mean, this is ideally suited to this plot of grass here. It's very domestic-sized. I mean, it's something that would look nice in any garden. I wonder what the residents feel about looking onto it. I wonder if there's an inscription here as well. I hope there is, because it it really deserves to to be preserved. And thank you for telling us about it. No pigeons on this one. But this Mm. this is more a size we can relate to. It's about four foot wide and probably seven foot tall. Yeah, yeah. I never touch artwork, but you, you're tempted to here. This is really quite weathered because obviously it's surrounded, it, all sides are open to the elements rather than the, the, the big one, which has just got the front. In fact, I think they're actually better outside. I think now they're more accessible if anybody wants to seek them out. I think I really do think they're better outside than ever they were inside. Well, it's really good that you're taking time to show us where these sculptures are and uh, talk about Affinity Waters history in 12 objects. Now, what are we going to see next? The pumping station or the reservoir? The pumping station comes first. In fact, I did catch sight of it. Quite emotive for me to be on this site, actually, after a long time, knowing how many years I spent here, as did many others, getting my head round where everything was. So the main entrance would have been probably those flats just to our left there the, there um, oh that's that's the pumping station right let's go up to the yeah, gates uh, the, the, the pumping station and oh it's a concrete flat building it's, again rather large but you can make no mistake yes, it is a pumping station it's it's uh, shouts water company it was built I think in 1939, the same as the reservoir was, it's got a few add-ons, which are not so attractive, sort of faded green plastic. We're up to these green iron gates now, which of course were never here because they didn't need to be. And there right next to it is the reservoir. The reservoir is 4,642 cubic metres. Well, that's amazing because the reservoir stands on a hill overlooking the pumping station, a small hill, and it's just two square metal frames that you see, almost like cardboard boxes, rather large ones, protruding a bit, but you wouldn't know there was a reservoir under it. Not really, no, it's very low-lying. I I guess really above ground it's only about uh, eight, nine feet. Um, Incidentally, the roadway down to... uh, other parts of our estate ran down here it was a concrete roadway I do remember actually we used to have an annual five mile I think it was fun run around Hatfield and this steep bank was effectively the grandstand to to cheer on the winners so everybody this was covered in people sitting on that natural slope for the reservoir and and of course the, the reservoir the water then goes to be uh, treated, treated. Yes, yeah, yes. treatment works and, and right. the pumping station it's necessary but it's not in use today uh, as I understand it it is it's been decommissioned since the year 2000 for drinking water purposes anyway and the reservoirs that Affinity Water has now they date back to Victorian times some of them underground but the architecture can be wonderful really really nice Victorian arches I mean they are something to behold Yes, yes, they are. I think there's some examples for Victorian arches and brickwork effects and that that are really stunning, almost cathedral-like. But, of course, once they're filled with water and nobody goes down there, nobody sees them. So, But when they're drained for cleaning purposes, then they do get exposed. 
photographs and videos are taken. Well, should we walk back then, Steve, now to our magnificent large sculpture? And as we do so through this housing estate, we, we can actually see the where was the entrance to the offices of Affinity Water or the Lee Valley Water Company. And there, there were big gates there, weren't there? Yeah, there were uh, big iron gates which were automatic in, in theory, not towards the end at the entrance there that we just drove through to get here. There were a further set of big black gates towards the pumping station, in fact, that were kept open. They didn't need to be locked. And incidentally, I must just say, right next to the pumping station, for years and years and years, was our own petrol station, which we we used to fill up the vans with. Leaded, of course. (laughs) Leaded then. And, of course, you could get petrol for your private car as well. And I think it was something like 45p a gallon. Well, let's just walk back. Those were the days. But I just can't believe that, look, here we are at the end of the road. And now I know it's a sculpture. I mean... You can just see it. I can just see a signpost that may be telling about the baby one. Yes, the baby one. We missed that because it's behind a tree, but never mind. Let's just go and look. Here we are. I can read that to you as well. It's just incredible that all this heritage on this site, and you wouldn't know it was there. Perhaps it should be moved. And it says, created by the sculptor William Mitchell in 1963 to 1965 as a test piece to show the design of his proposed mural. The test piece is an abstract composition showing the fluidity of forms that could be achieved using reinforced concrete. Wow. There we are. And I should just add, this test piece has always been outdoors. But the large sculpture... Come on, let's... You know, is it 20 foot high by... Uh, Well, without knowing the exact dimensions, I would say it's, yes, 20 to 24 foot high by probably... 18 feet wide or something like that. It's a magnificent piece. It's, as I say, it was the largest in the world, so that's one of the reasons. The largest in the, the world? Largest in single cast, yes. Gosh. And it's a miracle that they managed to transport it to its new site, which isn't far away, but still highly breakable, in one piece. Can I ask where it was made? It was made on site, here. Oh, on site? They yeah. bought the concrete yeah, on site? it was site. made out before the roof was on the building. It was made, so it, technically it was made outside and the building built round it. So quite an achievement to really demolish the building and keep the sculpture. Yes, yes, it must have been very well protected. Steve, do we know anything about William Mitchell, other works that he did? Yes, he did a marvellous frieze that stands over the entrance, the main entrance, in fact, to the Liverpool Metropolitan Cathedral. So that's the, the Catholic Cathedral, I believe, which they affectionately call Paddy's Wigwam. And he's only just died? Yeah, he died January 2020. He was born in 1925 and born in Vale, I think, in London. He was a sick child. He had virtually no education, actually, and spent a lot of his formative years in Italy. Well, it is an amazing piece and testimony to, to him as well and to Affinity Water and its predecessors for commissioning it. You can't stop looking at it and you can't stop seeing different imaging within it, whether it's drops of water, mechanical wheels, all the kind of processes that we take for granted in bringing clean, clear water through our taps. Yep, I'm just marvelling at it as well. And as I say, it does look to me better than it ever did. And I'm not going to leave it another 11 years before I see it again. Well, Steve, as we walk back towards it, I think it's time to end the second in our series of the history of affinity water in 12 objects podcast and today we have looked at sculpture a rather remarkable one pumping stations and reservoirs and all on one site here comes a postman but thank you for talking to us always a pleasure thank you i look forward to the next in our series and so do i steve baker planning m and r signing off <laughs>